the forehead of your robot. Hello everyone, this is Leo here. If you read Dark and Heart, you probably know who I am. If not, let me tell you. I'm just a five-year-old boy living with only a father and one older brother, he's eight years old, named, Terence. My mom was killed by her ex from jealousy at the park, and her ex attempted to kill my dad as well, but we luckily escaped. I was diagnosed with cancer, and when I was on a trip to a behind-the-scenes tour of my favorite show, SpongeBob SquarePants, my dad found Dark and Heart. How do you know, you may ask? One thing my dad didn't know when he wrote the story, was that I was also a fan of creepypastas, not just Spongebob, and when I came across Dark and Heart, and noticed the main character's traits that are too linked to my dad to be considered a coincidence, I instantly knew it was my dad without a doubt. Here are some facts my dad didn't tell you about me. First, I am best friends with a classmate at school named, Ayanna. She also loves Spongebob, and we had things in common, so I think that we can easily click and be best friends forever. Before I was diagnosed with cancer, I asked her if we could hang out for a Spongebob watch party, and she accepted. Although because my dad took me on a surprise trip to the hospital after noticing the symptoms, I had to cancel the watch party. Fast forward a couple of weeks after my dad got me into chemotherapy, I was sent to the hospital to get my test to see how my cancer is going. I got the results, and it says that my cancer is finally done. I was excited, and when I got to school, I rushed to my first classroom period, and excitedly told all my classmates that my cancer was gone. They all cheered, and my best friends hugged me. I told them that I planned to host a celebration party, and that everyone was invited. I even told my dad, and he allowed it. Having a behind-the-scenes tour of my favorite show, and beating cancer, I think I'm probably living the best life. So, we were partying, and we were going crazy. We were playing video games, and we danced to some awesome music. One of my classmates named, Aiden, claimed that his father worked at Nickelodeon as a crew member for multiple shows, including SpongeBob SquarePants. I didn't believe him, and thought he said that just to try to be cool, but what he said next changed my mind. Of course I do. I borrowed one of my dad's SpongeBob DVDs, that has some unaired SpongeBob episodes. He showed the case to us with proof as well. The case had a picture of SpongeBob mopping at the Krusty Krab, and the SpongeBob DVD was named, SpongeBob Fixes the Environment. I had an old CRT television and a DVD player that connects to the TV through HDMI cables. I put the disc in, and it took me to the menu. It started with the background of Bikini Atoll, the island in the intro, and it went down to show the houses of three iconic characters, SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward. Sometimes, Spongebob would appear and do anything related to cleaning. I pressed the episode selection button, and it only showed two episodes, Darkened Heart, and Burning Mind. We watched Darkened Heart, and we just didn't feel really scared. Although, one of my friends felt a little chill down their spine. Although, Burning Mind was way different. It started with the intro, and it was normal at first, but when the screen faded to black before going to the title card, I could faintly see some text that said, It's burning hot. The title card appeared, but the credits sequence that appeared after the title card, was different. First, the clear waves in the credits were gone, just sand and rocks. Next, instead of the text for the credits fading out until it's no longer seen, it disintegrated like it was burnt to ash and blown away by the wind. Finally, instead of the usual bubble transition that normally appears after the credits, it was replaced with fire. Flames were flying out to the top of the screen, with smoke appearing on some of the flames. It started with a real-life clip of random people playing on the beach. The French narrator spoke, saying, Ah, uh, it looks like people at the beach are having fun, playing games, eating ice cream, and swimming in the ocean water. What a great way to spend the summer day. The screen faded to the island that appears in the intro, known as Bikini Atoll. The narrator said, Ah, uh, I wonder what the creatures in Bikini Bottom are doing. Let's have a look at our favorite little boy, SpongeBob SquarePants. 
The screen pans underwater to SpongeBob's pineapple, and then it fades to SpongeBob's bedroom. The foghorn alarm sounded, and after SpongeBob turned off the alarm, he yawned and said, Good morning, Gary. Meow. After Gary responded with a meow, the screen went to the outside of his pineapple, with the screen close to his bedroom window. Random cartoon sound effects of what looks like SpongeBob falling down the stairs played, with each noise having SpongeBob saying, Ow! The screen pans to the next window. After it successfully goes to the window, the noise is stopped, and a sound effect of what sounds like a toilet flushing plays. After the sound effect finishes, the noises of SpongeBob falling down the stairs continue playing, until the screen finishes panning to the door. Then, SpongeBob starts chanting, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, while running down to the Krusty Krab. When SpongeBob enters the workplace, he somersaults and jumps while making face down in slow motion, and he perfectly fits into the cashier window which leads to the kitchen, and lands perfectly in front of the grill. The screen goes to three anchovies at a table holding paper, one saying, 10, another saying, 9, and the third saying, 10. The second anchovy taps the third anchovy on the shoulder, and notifies them about the upside-down paper. The third anchovy rotates the paper right side up. The screen goes back to the kitchen with SpongeBob in the middle of cooking patties, and after a couple of seconds, SpongeBob starts sweating a little bit. SpongeBob wipes the sweat off the side of his head, and said, Gee, is it just me? Or is the weather getting warmer than usual? SpongeBob shrugged it off, and continued cooking Krabby Patties. After SpongeBob completed one Krabby Patty, he was about to give Squidward the order, but the Krabby Patty ran into the freezer. SpongeBob tried to make another patty, but it also ran into the freezer once it was finished. Squidward yelled at SpongeBob, saying, SpongeBob, where are the Krabby Patties? The customers are waiting! SpongeBob explained to Squidward about the Krabby Patties going to the freezer, but Squidward didn't believe him. SpongeBob cooked a Krabby Patty again, while Squidward was watching, and the Krabby Patty went to the freezer like the others. SpongeBob notified Mr. Krabs about the problem, and he cooked another patty to show Mr. Krabs, and of course, the patty ran to the freezer. Um, I don't even know why it's happening. Let me think for a second. Mr. Krabs said. A sound of an oven timer plays, and after a couple of seconds, Mr. Krabs gasped in realization as the hypothetical oven timer dings, and he clenched his fists as his expression changed to envy, and he yelled, PRANKING! His fists were shaking, and Mr. Krabs' nose popped out with steam coming out. Mr. Krabs dashes to the chum bucket, and the screen goes to Plankton, about to prepare himself some food. Mr. Krabs captures Plankton, and everything went to black. Mr. Krabs turned on a small lamp hanging from the ceiling, and it revealed Plankton, being tied up to a small chair as if he was being interrogated. What did you do to the Krabby Patty? Mr. Krabs yelled angrily. Nothing, I swear! I was about to prepare myself some holographic meatloaf! Plankton answered with fear, as his body started trembling. Then why are the Krabby Patties running to the freezer? Was that one of your plans? Mr. Krabs asked while retaining his anger. I don't even know! I am telling the truth! Plankton responded. Mr. Krabs turns on another lamp to reveal Karen tied up to a pole. He grabs a bucket full of water, and he threatens Plankton, saying, Tell the truth now, or else your wife won't see you ever again! Karen breaks out of the rope, and punches Mr. Krabs, while telling him, Plankton's telling the truth! You wanted to take a break from planning up schemes to steal your precious formula. He felt like he was too humiliated by you to continue making up schemes, and feel even sad. Mr. Krabs calmed down and threw the water bucket off screen, and a couple of seconds later, the sound of a large window breaking plays, while you can hear the iconic My leg! quotes being spoken. Fine! I believe you! Mr. Krabs says, as he entices Plankton from the chair. Am I the only one who feels like it's getting hotter and hotter outside than usual? Mr. Krabs asked. Actually, no. I'm having the same feeling too. Plankton responded. The screen does the fire transition back to the kitchen, and SpongeBob is what I would call speed cooking Krabby Patties, with each patty running to the freezer. 
After what seemed like 10 seconds, SpongeBob stopped in frustration and yelled. That's it! SpongeBob dashed to the freezer, took all the Krabby Patties out, and built wooden planks cartoonishly fast on the door. SpongeBob started panting, and then dusted his hands off as he said. There! Now you bad noodles can't run to the freezer anymore! SpongeBob put the Krabby Patties in a tray, and rang the order bell to notify Squidward that the order was finished. Squidward looked through the window, and said in a sarcastic tone, Wow! Those patties must be so low good that I can't even see them. SpongeBob laughed and said, Aye, aye, aye. Nice one, Squidward. Squidward pointed at the tray. SpongeBob looked at the tray to notice that it was empty. SpongeBob looked behind him to notice that the wooden planks that barricaded the door were broken, and pieces were lying down on the floor. SpongeBob tries to get the patties out of the freezer, but the doors are locked. SpongeBob walks back to the grill in disappointment. SpongeBob looked upwards, and he noticed something weird about Squidward. Ah, uh, Squidward! SpongeBob asked. What? Squidward replied. Your nose is melting! SpongeBob told Squidward. Squidward looked down, and he screamed as he ran to the freezer. Squidward starts to pant after entering the freezer, and he notices the Krabby Patties sitting still. Squidward started adjusting his nose as if it was modeling clay, and he asked the Krabby Patties. All right, why did you run to the freezer? The screen zoomed into the Krabby Patties, and they were silent, so silent that crickets were chirping in the background. Squidward repeated the question, and the screen went to the Krabby Patties again, with crickets starting to chirp again. Squidward sighed and said, Whatever. I just talked into a pile of Krabby Patties. Soon, the Krabby Patties ran out from the freezer back to the kitchen, and Squidward was confused. Now the patties are running out of the freezer. But why? Am I really that hideous? Then, a grotesque close-up painting of Squidward appeared for a couple of seconds, and a sound effect of a woman screaming in disgust played. He had barnacles on his face, some pimples as if he had acne, and eye buggers showing up. The screen enters Squidward's point of view, and fog starts to appear in front of him. A couple of seconds later, it looked like someone emitting yellowish orange light was inside the freezer behind the fog, and the light was getting bigger and bigger as if it was coming towards Squidward. Before it was able to get out of the fog, the scene goes back to the third person point of view, and Squidward tries to get out of the freezer, but the door is locked. After Squidward's failed attempt to open the door using the doorknob, he started banging on the door, and the light that was emitted by the unknown and unseen creature, started to shine on Squidward. Squidward looked behind himself, and the scene went back to the kitchen with Spongebob. And after a second, Squidward started screaming as the freezer door window started flashing, as if there was lightning inside, and Spongebob looked at the freezer door without even going inside. After Squidward screamed in agony, Squidward successfully opened the freezer door, and he looked like he was burnt by the sun. SpongeBob raised his mouth to ask a question, but before SpongeBob could even say a single word, Squidward, in a grumpy mood, said, Don't even ask about it! As if he experienced it often to the point he had just gotten used to it. SpongeBob decided to cook another patty, and surprisingly for him, the patty didn't run away. Mr. Krabs enters the restaurant again, and notices Spongebob holding a tray with a Krabby Patty. Looks like you got him working, Boyo. Ready to continue the job? Mr. Krabs asked. I'm ready! Spongebob yelled. A time card appeared, saying, One hour later. The screen goes to two fish sitting at a table. They look like a married couple, and the male fish starts to sweat. Jeez, it's really hot out there. The male fish says. The female fish responds. You're right. It's so hot out there, that my drink turned into lava. She opens the drink lid to reveal actual lava inside the cup. Another fish dashes to the table, saying. I'm glad I'm not the only one, thinking that it's burning out. All the fish start to murmur for a couple of seconds, until a fish next to the crusty crab window yells out. Guys! Look! The fish points to the window, and the screen pans to reveal the chum bucket with a huge sign, and an arrow pointing to the structure. The sign said, free air conditioning here. 
The husband of the married couple sitting at the table said. Free air conditioning? Let's go to the chum bucket everyone. All the customers run out to the chum bucket, and Mr. Krabs exits his office after all the customers have left. Why are you all leaving? Mr. Krabs asked. He looks out the window, and notices the air conditioning sign at the chum bucket. Okay, that's it. SpongeBob! Mr. Krabs said. SpongeBob dashes at Mr. Krabs and yells. Yes, sir. His arms made the gesture of obeying an army captain's commands. I want you to go out and figure out the cause of Bikini Bottom turning into a giant underwater sauna. Mr. Krabs said. And Squidward. Squidward? Mr. Krabs says, as he notices that Squidward is not in the cashier boat, and there seems to be a sticky note on the back of the cash register. A close-up of the sticky note appears, and it seems to say, I'll pass, with Squidward's signature on the bottom. The screen fire transitions into Sandy's tree dome, and it looks like the sun is about to set. SpongeBob finished telling his problem to Sandy, and she had a solution. I see. I felt like it was getting hotter too, so I just decided to invent a heat mapper. It will track every surface temperature in a 75 mile radius. Sandy said. She handed the gadget to SpongeBob, and he responded. Thanks, Sandy. This is going to help me so much with this investigation. No problem. See you later. Sandy said. After a while. SpongeBob responded as he ran to the door and left the tree dome. The screen fire transitions into jellyfish fields with SpongeBob walking, and its sun is about to set. The heat mapper was looking normal until SpongeBob gasped. There seems to be a red circle that is moving in a running motion. SpongeBob starts running as well to chase that red circle, and it looks like the red circle is starting to make a U-turn. SpongeBob follows that red circle until it leads to an unknown city. SpongeBob felt a sense of familiarity until he realized what it was. A flashback of a clip of SpongeBob finding the same city in dark and heart appeared for a couple of seconds. SpongeBob noticed a shadowy figure running, and he was about to check the heat mapper when he noticed that it was missing. He decided to enter the city to see if the unknown running heat source was hiding there. He was about to open the door to a house when a voice startled SpongeBob. So, we meet again, SpongeBob. The voice said. SpongeBob looked behind him, and he noticed a familiar face. Hey, you're the nameless hat guy that I saw yesterday. SpongeBob said. But wait. If I saw you yesterday, then how am I still here when the Black Void consumed me yesterday? SpongeBob asked. The Black Void? There was no Black Void. After you defeated the Garbanzo Gang, they fell unconscious and were arrested, and then you collapsed on the floor. You must have had nightmares about that void. The anonymous head guy said. Oh, alright, but one more question. Why are you anonymous? Why don't you reveal yourself? SpongeBob asked. The head guy sighed, and then he said. Fine. You want an identity? The scene zoomed into the head guy's face, and his low poly eyeballs started to shape into intense fire and flame. His voice shifted to an angry tone, and he sounds like he was grunting while speaking. I'll give you an identity. The head guy said, and the screen zoomed out to his entire body. He started to scream, like a battle cry. The screen started to shake a little, and white cracks started to appear in his body, slowly growing. Before the cracks take over his entire body, the scene goes to SpongeBob watching, and light starts to shine on SpongeBob, as he squints to avoid getting blind, and a couple of seconds later, the screen fades to white for a couple of seconds until the screen fades back to normal. The head guy was no longer wearing a hat, and he looked different. His body was made of fire, actual fire. While his eyeballs were still shapes, they were less straight and more curved. He was wearing a tuxedo, and the screen goes to a close-up of his name tag, saying Airy Fortimer. SpongeBob slowly reads the name tag out loud, and to give you an easy idea of how it's pronounced, it sounds like, Airy Fortimer. Yes. That's my name and identity. Are you happy now? Ari asked. Yes, Ari, but wait a minute. Were you the one who increased the temperatures? SpongeBob asked. SpongeBob received a response, but not from Ari. 
He's not the only one you mourn! The unknown voice said. The screen goes to Plankton, flying on his jetpack and he lands on Aerie's shoulder. Let's just say I added fuel to the fire. Plankton said. We devised a plan to run crabs out of business by heating the sun with my invention to change the temperature of any object it connects to, and then use my air conditioner to attract the customers to the chum bucket. After Plankton revealed his plan, Airy responded to him, saying, Yes. And it's not we anymore, Pipsqueak. Wait, what? Plankton asked. Airy launches Plankton into the air, the same way Mr. Krabs launches Plankton. I'll get you, little treasure! Plankton yelled as he flew into the middle of nowhere. So wait a minute! I thought you were dead yesterday! SpongeBob said. Nope. I faked my death. The Garbanzo gang has short-term memory, and they only remember the major moments, hospitalizations included. I played dead to trick the gang into thinking they'd already beaten me to death. Harry said. Ah, alright, but I have one more question. Why are you doing this? Isn't there a better solution than burning the world? SpongeBob said. I will tell you my reasons in the form of a song. Now get ready, and follow along. Aerie said. The song started, and after about 40 seconds, Aerie started to sing. Here are the lyrics if you want to know. Once upon my burning mind, all my memories rewind. Back before your career starts, when I was everyone's fry cook star. That must be fun for you. Now just tell me what you do. Tell your story about your experience with the Krusty Crew. I loved to grill. It was my skill. When I felt famous, feeling happy, cooking food, feeding the hungry. Why were you gone? Where did you go? I guess you were like me. But what happened that made you take off? I finished one burger and I stepped in some grease. I fell down and fire appeared right next to me. This fast food chain was set ablaze, and I can only just gaze. Then, soon I got fired, and all my problems were tired. Can't go with the flow when I feel the world. I can't do this anymore. Harry cried. Time to end this world once and for all. Harry whistled, and a clip of a cargo ship carrying oil that suddenly fell appeared, and then the screen went back to the usual animation. Harry wore a helmet, and oil started pouring. He carried a fire extinguisher and a lighter. He lit the lighter and said his last words. Good riddance, SpongeBob. I will never see you nor Bikini Bottom again. He used the extinguisher to end himself, and the screen zoomed into the lighter in slow motion, falling until it gets the oil in the ground. Then, the screen zoomed out to the entirety of Bikini Bottom, and a couple of seconds later, it was covered with fire. Blood-curdling screams can be heard, and the screen went completely black. The credits show up, but the background was completely different. The background looked like it was torn down and set on fire, the torn background was dark, and the color was more brownish. The ambience of a forest fire started playing, and the music can be faintly heard. Although, the instruments sounded like it was decaying, and it was attempting to play. The speed of the music was really slow, and the tune was way off. The screen was distorted in a way that when you view it, it looks like a heat haze. The heat haze lasted until we got to the United Plankton Pictures Incorporated logo. Although, it was different. The water background was replaced with flowing red hot lava. All the plankton were replaced with piles of ash, implying they were severely burnt and charred beyond recognition. The text was in red, and the screen goes to the Nicktoons logo, all normal without any changes. After watching the episode, all my friends and I have made it clear that the writers went too far. But I wasn't surprised. I've seen some dark episodes that passed through. But knowing how I've encountered two lost episodes, I might start a lost episode club called, the Brand Enticer Expended Media Obtainer Club, or, the Bemo Club. Knowing that my family is like a lost media magnet, I wonder what tape, flash drive, VHS, or video file will come forth to me next.